I just I enjoy it. A lot of stuff can happen in a typical day in the harvest fields of Montana. Well, we're usually up about 6.30 or quarter till seven and typically out the door by about 7.30 and we're fueling up the fuel truck and getting things together that we need for the day and into the field by 8.30 or so. And then we're fueling and greasing and checking the combine, making sure everything's ready to go. And typically about nine o'clock, you know, we'll start cutting. The modern machinery that uh, came into agriculture is, is actually phenomenal as far as uh, being able to be more efficient. That basically what a lot of it is, is just making your harvest more productive. This particular spot right here is running 64 to 72 bushel to the acre, which is pretty exceptional spot. The whole field will probably average around the mid 50s. That means I went through a green spot and it made a funny racket. This thing is almost idiot proof because it won't let you do things you're not supposed to do. That was basically telling me my engine RPM had pulled down enough to you better be cautious. This new combine of Lester's with the GPS guidance on it and the fact that that 40 foot head can run, run through that grain and not miss but an inch, you know, that header is plumb full and that big machine's just processing the grain and that's just amazing, you know, to watch that thing work. You want to put a little more on me or? Well, if you want to, just go get rid of what you got. My job is to shuttle the grain from the combine in the grain cart across the field to the trucks who are parked, you know, in, in the edge of the field so they don't have to run across all the stubble and get all that stuff up in their radiators. And uh, Lester first told me, he said, uh, your job is to make sure the combines don't stop. So uh, I, I try to make sure I'm set up and, you know, picking up the full combine when he's good and full. And then most of the time I have to go get a a dump off of the other combine, whether he's full or not, and then make the run across the field to the trucks. We use a grain cart to load on as the combine never has to stop. Uh, probably one of the handiest and best uh, tools that a farmer can have as far as uh, cutting grain anyway. Well, we're pulling up to a truck to unload, and we gotta get 
close enough to the truck, but not too close. Make sure our auger tube will fold out. That should put us in position to start filling again. So now we'll put our auger out. Now let's turn the PTO on, which runs the auger. Let's get her up to RPM speed. and start filling the truck. So Sam originally discovered this place when he had some buddies come back to him in Virginia. They came out here hunting and just fell in love with the area and with the people. And so he drives all the way from Virginia to come up here and help us harvest. And then he also drives from Virginia every other year to come up here and hunt and enjoy the outdoors. Well, this is very unique country out here in the Missouri Breaks. We have very few acres that actually lays flat. Everything's either up and down or around the edge of the breaks. And uh, you have a variety of challenges as an operator because the fields are so irregular. But you also have the ability to, to look down in the big canyons and see a variety of wildlife. And so for that reason, sometimes you can get distracted at looking at the wildlife. In our operation, we only own one machine. For that reason, we've always relied on some help from custom cutters. We're not in an area where we have a lot of labor. It's just easier to, in addition to the machine that we already have, to just hire a custom cutter. And we've been a big believer in that because it speeds up harvest and it allows us to get the crop in in a timely fashion before it can get ruined by whatever mother nature throws at you. Well, probably after about the second or third year I was here, I kind of figured out what I was supposed to be doing. And when the custom cutters showed up one year, I'd, they were all a bunch of little young guys. And even though they'd cut, you know, thousands and thousands of acres from Oklahoma to Montana, you know, I kind of lined them up one day and I said, hey, we're going to do this this way in the field this year. You know, we're going to make sure that the combines get spaced out. We're going to use the wind in our favor. You know, we're not going to be having two combines running back to back and me trying to dump them and taking all the dust and the chaff out of the front combine. So uh, everybody got a big kick out of that. And then the next thing you know, I was working on the 10 commandments of cart driving and combine operations. So, <laughs> but anyway, pretty soon it became the last professional cart driver in the world. So I've been, been hanging out up here for 11 summers and all oh, we'll see how many more we can crank out. Every year in agriculture is unique. One year's not like the next year, especially in Montana. We started off super wet and then bang, no rain and we are hot and dry. So we've been to three different combine fires or field fires this year and uh, we've got them under control. I feel sorry for the folks to the east of us in eastern Montana that have been through the 250 to 300,000 acres of burned and entire herds of cattle displaced and just I, uh, I take my hat off to them and I and I most especially take my hat off to the people that are pitching in and helping them out. Amen to that. So my job as it relates to harvest is many, many different things and it changes from day to day, but I am a truck driver and probably more important than that, I'm a logistics person, if you will. There are several trucks that need to be juggled, several grain bins, several grain bin sites, a couple different augers and uh, 
all of that needs coordinated based on type of crop, moisture of crop. So it's it's a lot of logistics and just management. So that's probably my key role in addition to driving truck. And then another role that is huge is uh, usually I'm the chief maintenance person and and as things break down, I have to fix it. We're in Moore, Montana, which is about 68 miles from home, delivering wheat on a forward contract. So this is straight off the combine to the elevator. So I'm gonna sit here and eat whoopie pies. And my cameraman is gonna get out and open the tarp because it's a rule. You cannot pull onto the scale unless your tarp is open. The reason for that is they have a hydraulic probe that will come over and probe both hoppers for a sample. This is where you pull up to this thing and you get a lottery ticket. Find out whether you won the lottery or not. <laughs> that didn't win. Gonna have to keep farming. Either Pat or Aaron will rotate days with supper and, uh, you know, they bring it out in the pickup truck and then we'll get out some little chairs and they'll set a table up and, and put the food out there and plates and forks and spoons and knives and, and we all sit around, the whole crew, we, you know, everybody's there enjoying that supper time meal. It's, it's, it's just a good event and we get to check in with everybody and I usually ask Aaron what's going on in the world during the day. And, and, uh, but yeah, I get to see all the kids and, uh, you know, just everybody. It's, it's a great, great experience. Good fellowship. We have to eat our chicken and noodles and carrots and, you know, uh, oh, and all, you got to eat it on the mashed potatoes. So it looks pretty yummy. So we're going to try, we're not going to mess with it. But noodles and mashed potatoes. And a little starch on starch here. Hey, but it's pretty darn good. <laughs> Hey, look at us, two old farts still out here in the middle of a Montana wheat field, late at night. He's, he's <laughs> telling me, he's warning me, he says, hey, now be careful, you got a photographer in front of you, <laughs> right here when we got done unloading. <laughs> I said, yeah, damn, paparazzi's always in the way. <laughs> Any farmer will tell you that he has to make money at being in the farming game. And that is part of the operation. But when you really look at it, agriculture is all about feeding our country and a lot of other countries in this world market that we're in right now. That's one of the reasons that we are trying to diversify into different crops because right now a lot of your peas and lentils actually end up going to a different country uh, which they use as a primary source of protein. For that reason I feel that we are stewards of the land. We're trying to help feed the whole world. I just I enjoy it. You know where else could an old man like me get to run a 255 horsepower John Deere tractor all day, you know. Agriculture needs people. Production agriculture needs people, uh, but not just there. Agriculture is huge. It's a huge industry, and 
and uh, I'm just glad I get to represent a very small piece of it. Telling these stories, well, it's important. For about eight years now, I've been making these harvest videos that I put on YouTube, and it gives people a glimpse at what that scene is like, because so many now have no idea. More and more people are just becoming disconnected from what agriculture is, and it's led to a lot of misconceptions. We need to tell these stories, but agriculture is a very large and very diverse industry. There's just so many different fields in it, and that's a lot to cover. So as far as telling agriculture's story, well, we've just begun. <laughs>